I'm joined now by branding expert Rita Clifton. This is disastrous for Samsung, isn't it? It's really bad stuff. I mean, this is one of the world's top 10 brands. It's also working in a hyper competitive market with competitors you know, clicking at its heels all the time. And you can't say they've handled this crisis particularly well, I'm afraid. There are certain things you need to do in these situations. And I'm afraid that they score a bit of a could do better on most of those things. And did they just rush it out, do you think? They're wanting to compete with the, the new iPhone. They brought it forward, didn't they, by a month? I mean, is that what's happened, do you think? Well, certainly there are pressures to get products out really quickly. I mean, Samsung's reputation is based on innovation, great technology, technology you can trust, and that's obviously a big challenge in its own right. But of course, when you've got competitors who are about to launch something, you've got Google who's going to launch something, you've got a new brand in Huawei that's you know really, really chasing the others. So a lot of pressure, a lot of business pressure, and you can absolutely see how that's showing up in some of their behaviour over the last few weeks. Well, how do you think they've done this? So how do you think they've managed so far dealing with such a disaster? Well, obviously, it's an incredibly difficult situation, but there are three main things you need to do in these sort of situations. First, you've got to make sure you acknowledge the problem. It usually helps to get someone out there, a spokesperson, a human face mm. to do that. You've got to acknowledge the problem and own it. Secondly, you've got to go way beyond what you think is just legally necessary or useful. And the third thing is you've really got to communicate well. And of course, on all of those three, there's been, you know, there have been some challenges, and particularly on the communication front. They've tended at the moment to stand behind corporate statements or company spokespeople mm. and so on. In these situations where you've got a strong brand and a very large screw-up, you need to get someone in front of the cameras reassuring people, and particularly because the le that level of trust is one of the things that's made Samsung the strong brand that it is, and you want to feel that human trust. Smartphones in particular are products that you have with you all the time. Mm. They're like your best friend. It's Note 7 wasn't their main phone, was it? But do you think consumers will trust Samsung again? It is possible to recover from this situation. If you think about some of the brands that have recovered over time, I mean, Toyota, its products were associated with some people being killed for a while. And so, therefore, it's a very tough situation, you know, and nothing like that has really happened here. But Toyota has recovered because they demonstrated what they were doing to make sure none of those challenges would happen again. They had the accelerated pe pedal problem, if you remember. They said this is what they were doing to make sure that would never happen again. That's exactly what Samsung need to do, by the way. And they also got a human face to come in front of the camera and promise customers that things are going to be different from now on. They wanted to recover their reputation. And again, it's possible to do that. Samsung can do it, but they really need to act and act now to protect the brand when they've been trying to protect shorter term revenue before. We will see. Thank you so much for that branding expert, Rita Clifton. Thank you very much. Now,